Hey everyone and welcome back to the History Reader. In today's video we're going to be talking about this book here, King Richard, Nixon and Watergate, an American Tragedy by Michael Dobbs. So this is the first book that I'm reading for or that I read for the History Challenge which is currently ongoing and it was a really really good way to kick off the challenge. I really thoroughly enjoyed the book. There were some issues with it which I'll get into but just as a rundown it looks at Watergate through the eyes of Richard Nixon and comparing him and kind of using the lens of the Greek tragedy where the hero attains some goal but in attaining that goal ruins himself, sets up factors that eventually come to ruin him and obviously it is titled King Richard using that uh, like kind of like placing Nixon at the, the top of this bureaucracy which he sets up uh, with his, his henchmen Holderman, Ehrlichman Dean, all of these people who eventually come to be his downfall. It's written in a way that's not written like a normal history book where it kind of fairly dry and looking at the sources and the chronology of events and how we know things etc etc. It's written to be gripping, it's written so that you can really feel this uh, connection to the story. And I think that it achieves that for the most part. Certainly the, the beginning and the end are really, really well crafted and well written, particularly the recordings, the way the recordings are handled. For those who aren't aware, Richard Nixon sets up a recording system in the White House so that Effectively, whenever he entered a room and started talking in that room, tape recorders would turn on and record whatever was happening inside that room and also on any telephone that he was uh, speaking into. So all of these recordings are happening and they were done for purportedly for the reason of Nixon being able to go back and listen to whatever uh, had been said in a meeting or if he needed to review anything, he could do that. The issue became effectively 24 hours of recordings every day adds up very quickly. And it's all pretty sensitive, obviously. The president is talking about fairly sensitive matters, classified matters. It becomes very difficult to go back and find anything in there. And to allow someone to do that, they need to be trusted. In the book, the way it's written, those recordings kind of become a character of their own. The same way as Ehrlichman and Holderman and Dean and Magruder and the whole range of Watergate defendants are characters working against Nixon, who were subservient to Nixon and serving him. They eventually become the reason that Nixon's downfall happens and the recordings work in that same way. And I think that's really the genius of this book is that the way he writes the scenes in it, I don't want to give the impression that this is a historical fiction, it's not, it is a history, but he writes it in this sort of literary way where the scenes are constructed in a way that you're always aware that those recordings are there and they put in place by Nixon. Nixon knows that he, everything is being recorded. He believes he's doing everything for a good reason and eventually it becomes his downfall and the, the book ends at the moment where the recordings become, like the, the existence of the recordings become known to the wider public. And after that point, Nixon's presidency is effectively over. Although it does take several months after that, there's legal battles, etc., etc., which eventually end up in Nixon resigning. The moment when they become known, that is Nixon's undoing. So it's a fascinating, fascinating story, obviously, and it's a fascinating way that Michael Dobbs has approached the story. As I was saying a, co a couple of videos ago, biographies don't have to just be cradle to grave, a story of someone's life. They can be written in this fascinating, really creative way. 
And this is a perfect example of that. He has written another book, One Minute to Midnight, which is about the Cuban Missile Crisis. So I'm definitely gonna uh, read that one. From memory, the Cuban Missile Crisis also has an element of recordings. There is National Security Council recordings, I believe, of those days surrounding the Cuban Missile Crisis. So we do know what was happening in there, or at least some people have been able to access those recordings and and listen to them so i definitely want to pick up one minute to midnight and read it because this was really an enjoyable read it's not very long it does bog down a little bit in the middle with some of the meetings between haldeman and erlingman and dean and this like back and forth that happens in there but it's only 50 or 100 pages worth in the middle of the book the rest of the book is really, really well paced. You sort of fly through it. That's the first book that I've read. The next one I'm reading is Andrew Roberts' History of Waterloo, which is very short, so I'm about to finish that. And I'll have a video up on that very, very soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.